Hello again, everybody. Greg Scott Bailey, and I am here to talk about San Diego Comic Con 2017. Uh, I, of course, am not really in San Diego right now. This is wonderful uh, trickery of a green screen. Again, I know I fooled you, didn't I? All right. So here's the thing. Uh, I got to get to bed. I got a 12-hour shift ahead of me, so I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. But I've got a whole slew of topics over here uh, that I'm going to talk about, uh, at least five topics uh, that we're going to start out with. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is Batman. So Ben Affleck's Batman. Uh, we're all anxious to find out when we're actually going to see this movie. Well, according to a news report from The Hollywood Reporter, it looks like Ben Affleck is actually going to try to bow out as Batman. When that will happen, who knows? Uh, when we'll be told about it, who knows? Uh, this weekend for uh, San Diego Comic-Con and hopefully here in a couple hours after I record this, at the Warner Brothers DC panel, maybe they'll actually announce something about this issue. Uh, now, John Campia, another uh, fellow YouTuber and uh, uh, news uh, entertainment news pundit uh, who uh, worked at Col uh, Collider Video, uh, uh, he's he's feeling like they're just going to go ahead and try to skip over the whole issue this weekend. They don't want to uh, have a bad uh, face on the whole issue. They just want to go ahead and skip it, or they're going to deny that Ben Affleck is off the project and leaving, and uh, we still got Justice League coming out, and the last thing they want is bad press before even Justice League comes out. I kind of agree, but at the same time, um, I wish we could do something to, like, encourage Ben to stay with it, because I honestly really enjoy Ben Affleck's portrayal of both Bruce Wayne and Batman. Um, I've enjoyed the other incarnations before, uh, but quite honestly, I, I do feel like Ben Affleck portrays the Batman that I want to see. I want to see this 45 to 50 year old Batman who's already been through the streets and the villains and the carnage and the chaos, possibly losing uh, one of his Robins. I, I, who knows? Um, you know what we saw in Batman v Superman. I think was just tip of the iceberg. So. I am anxious to see more Ben Affleck Batman. However, I understand he is also going through a lot of personal issues right now. And as much as my inner fandom wants to have him do more Batman, I can honestly say I would not wish that upon him. And it, I, I don't want him to basically sacrifice his family's life for my entertainment, let alone everybody else's. So uh, to Ben Affleck, I really hope uh, yeah, everything's getting sorted out, everything's fine, and I do really hope that you get an opportunity to continue as Batman for at least a couple more movies down the line. Um, you know, I'd love to see what happens. Uh, so next topic, the Avengers Infinity War. So uh, at D23 last weekend, uh, we touched up a little bit on the, oh gosh, it, it, it was like a sizzle reel or it was like a, a featurette or some sort of footage that they released basically exclusively for the D23 crowd. And here's hoping that they do it again for the San Diego Comic-Con crowd because uh, the more people watch it and write down the description of what they saw, the more we, the folks that are at home, um, will get an idea of what exactly they're showing. Now, I also agree with a few others that after San Diego Comic-Con or maybe even you know, later on today, Marvel, uh, it would be really great if they go ahead and release this footage as a teaser and a precursor to things to come because right now the hype machine is, is so real. Um, again, we have Thor Ragnarok coming out next, I believe Black Panther, and then we have oh, Infinity War. So it, it, it's just one of those things where it's just like we, we just had a really wonderful run with Spider-Man. We get to see Thor, we get to see Black Panther, and then we get to see Infinity War. And quite honestly, this is just a great time to be a Marvel Comics fan and a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan. So I look forward to hopefully some more exclusive or other announcements from Marvel today. Uh, you know, it's I'm recording this Saturday morning. The show's opening in probably about an hour to two hours here. Um, it, it's just, I look forward to it. Um, but so the thing with Avengers Infinity War, what they showed, or excuse me, what they talked about showing at the, the convention, uh, at <clears throat> what they talked about at D23, the footage that they showed, 
um, it's gotten a lot of people speculating about what we're going to expect, uh, who's going to live, who's going to die. And I'm actually curious what everybody thinks about that. So post in the comments below your thoughts from the description from last weekend's D23 footage. And again, if they end up showing it at San Diego, let's hope that they actually show it to the public too, because man, we're all anxious to see it. Uh, so my next topic is... The Punisher. John Bernthal's portrayal of The Punisher in Netflix. So we are going to get uh, both you know, the Defenders and the Punisher series here shortly. I believe the Defenders is uh, first. Uh, but John Bernthal at San Diego Comic-Con uh, talked to Steve Frosty Weintraub with Collider News and uh, had a really great interview. I recommend if you go to Collider's YouTube channel and watch the interview. Um, it's really fun. John Bernthal himself comes off as a really humble ar uh, artist. You know, he, he's an actor that he does wish to portray the best role possible. He wants to work hard and he wants to please the fans. But at the same time, he's not letting the hype train get to him where he's just egotistical and just full of himself. He, he says that he is still nervous because he wants to get it right for all of us, the fans. And I think that is completely awesome, especially it is completely awesome because we've seen him as Shane in The Walking Dead. Now we've seen him in a couple other movies. Uh, speaking of Ben Affleck, we've seen him in um, uh, The Accountant. And there was a nice little uh, uh, back and forth between him and Ben Affleck and The Accountant. And recently, Baby Driver, we got to see him in that as well. And so John Bernthal himself is, he's picking up these roles, he's having fun with them, but I quite honestly think that he is going to continue to be our quintessential Punisher live action for a while. So um, it was really nice to see that interview, and I bring up this topic because I really recommend uh, you check out the interview uh, that uh, uh, Frosty had with uh, John Bernthal for The Punisher. And uh, so my next topic, of course, from The Punisher, we lead into the defenders all right so we got to finally see some uh footage not just exclusive for san diego comic-con but now we get to see the footage of um the defenders we got to see all the characters uh, in action in conversation meeting up together and from what i hear they actually showed the first episode at san diego comic-con so we won't see that until of course it is released uh, on netflix but uh, from the, the trailer that they showed, I'm getting so damn anxious. Now, I understand that a lot of people didn't like Iron Fist. That's completely understandable. Um, you know, a lot of people had a little bit of problem with Luke Cage's second half. Uh, some people were mixed a little bit about Jessica Jones. And Daredevil seems to be the only one that's hitting two for two right now. Again, with the Punisher in there, it really amped things up. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, the Defenders... I think it's in good hands. The trailer shows some real promise, and it's not just the action, but it is also the way the characters are going to interact. Um, what I hope and I wish for is I actually do want a little bit more connection to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It doesn't have to be, hey, Captain America does this, why can't I do that? Hey you're strong Luke Cage but are you as strong as the Hulk it doesn't have to be like that specific but what would be nice is, is if they actually touch up on a little bit of current events where we both got Spider-Man and we've got uh, uh, not not the Battle of New York but you know recent events with the uh, Sokovia Accords um, I really hope and I wish that they could do something to mention that stuff but they don't have to like specifically say those things um it would be nice but i understand that they're trying to keep it loose because the problem is is once the once one property does one thing the other property has to do it too and that's so much to try to help you know cohesively tie together and once you got all these properties running this way that way it's very hard to keep it all together so completely understandable i just as a fanboy i really want just a little bit more like interconnectivity that's all I'm asking for. Uh, so yeah, The Defenders, really great trailer, really great information coming out of San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, from what I understand, um, it ended up doing really well with the actual crowds there at San Diego. 
I mean, even the birds are loving it. <laughs> okay, and then so my last topic, of course, is the Inhumans. Now, I saved this one for last because um, here's the thing. I'm usually Captain Optimism with everything that's going on with uh, comic book movies, comic book TV shows, everything that's going on with all these things. It's fun. It's exciting. This is a great time that we live in where all these productions are being done. And, you know, I'll go back to DC. I know I'm a Marvel fanboy first, but when it comes to DC, they're Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, uh, Legends of Tomorrow, and now we're, uh, we're looking forward to Black Lightning. Oh my God, and just everything that they're working on that is really great. Now, for Marvel, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been hit and miss. I've honestly, I've enjoyed all of it. I know there's some lackluster episodes. There's some stories that are kind of contrived. It, it's been frustrating for people. I under, completely understand that. Uh, but for me, it's been fun. It's been enjoyable. I, I was really hoping for a, um, a spinoff with Mockingbird. That didn't happen. Um, we now have uh, that actress going off to be on the Orville from uh, um, Seth MacFarlane. But now we have the Inhumans. Now the Inhumans were originally a movie slate, part of the MCU, and I believe it was 2019, 2020 that they were going to have that movie come out. It was at the end of their slate line. It got removed from the movie slate, and now it's moved to a TV show. And the very first promo images were kind of, eh, um, I, I didn't really know how to feel. Um, I have it right up here to my corner, and I hate to be like this, but Medusa looks like she has a really cheap wig on. And you're talking about when, when Medusa's hair is all over the place and flowing and grabbing things and, and just that intricate of a, a power you don't make it look like she's wearing a really cheap wig. Like it looks like something out of a, a Halloween store. I'm not usually really just um, frustrated about these things, but honestly, that's been my skepticism. And so there's that. But then the rest of the the, the characters, I mean, they, they look okay. Um, you know, and and they're all right. Black Bolt doesn't have to have the full mask. I'm perfectly fine with that. The actor seems fine who's playing Black Bolt. Um, Karnak and and. Um, See, now I can't remember all the characters' names. Uh, Maximus. Uh, Maximus, uh, Black Bolt's brother, um, is uh, um, one of the guys from Game of Thrones. And I, I really do look forward to his his little back and forth uh, with the whole situation taking over the Inhumans. Now, <clears throat> recently they showed a new trailer. New trailer's a little bit better. I'm feeling a little bit more optimistic about it. And, of course, one of the things they did is they showed the animated uh, hair of Medusa actually grabbing things, but they showed it towards the end. So this is probably the first property that I'm actually just a little hesitant on. And I really, I don't know. I, I really hope that they can uh, amp up the effects towards the end of the production here and make it a little bit better than what we've seen in the previews. Um, for those that don't know, uh, they're in, working on this in conjunction with IMAX and they're going to release, I think the first two episodes. So they're probably doing like a two hour, um, you know, pilot, uh, so to speak, um, which will air in theaters and IMAX theaters. And then ABC will have it on, uh, their channel. Um, I've heard a little bit back and forth, whether or not they're actually going to involve, uh, Daisy from, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or not, like, are, are they even going to mention any connectivity with that? So, this is a really weird situation, and they greenlit it, they, they, they filmed it, they've gone right into production, and they've made this happen. But, I think they're, they're still, like, I think they really missed the window of opportunity to go in humans instead of mutants, since Fox has the license rights to Marvel's mutants. Um, I think that window's passed, but if they if they do it right, if the stories are good, if the actors um, are are not um, cheesy '80s '90s uh, TV show comic books, um, if they can pull it off, you know, if anybody can pull it off, then that's great. So I'm always hoping, I'm always optimistic as much as possible. I would say out of all the news of uh, things being launched, this is probably my most um, skeptical most hesitant uh announcement was the inhumans property so we'll see how that goes so there you have it folks is just five topics for san diego comic-con so far again i'm recording this on saturday so we have all of saturday announcements and sunday announcements 
I will try to uh, record what I can, get what I can done, but I got to work all weekend. So, so there's not going to be too much from San Diego Comic Con uh, D23. I had four videos, probably just going to have two for San Diego Comic Con. I would love to be there. I mean, you know, love to be resting on these steps, you know, reading some new comics that I picked up. But uh, alas, you know, no San Diego Comic Con for me, probably not for a while. Uh, so thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit subscribe and hit the bell next to it so you get notifications when I upload new videos and when I go live. And if you could do me a favor and hit thumbs up on this video, let me know you like what you're seeing. Any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Any thoughts and theories on the topics that I brought up, post them below. Let's talk about them. Let's discuss. Uh, right now, I have uh, 77 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100. So help me out with that so I can get my customized URL for the channel. Uh, thanks, everybody, for stopping by. And as always, we'll see you on the next adventure. <laughs>